Howdy Commander, Zeko here. The question of German destroyer builds has been popping up quite a bit lately in live chats and YouTube video comment sections. And if my YouTube profile picture didn't give it away already, I've got some ideas on the subject. So today, we're going to be making the case for von Spee on your German destroyer builds. Now, to fully make this argument in its totality, we must first discuss the nature of the German destroyers. And to do this, we need to talk about destroyers on a spectrum. What do you mean by destroyers on a spectrum, Echo? Well, there's sort of a continuum or a spectrum of the various sub-roles that a destroyer can fill. And if you follow along here, I'll try to throw up a graphic. On one side of this spectrum, you've got quote-unquote gunboat destroyers. On the far opposite end of the spectrum, you've got more torpedo boat type of destroyers. And in the middle, you've obviously got hybrids. So on the far super duper extreme end of gunboat spectrum, you've got the Soviet tech tree destroyers that cannot stealth torp. Everything up through the Minsk. Then just slightly in from that, you've got the low tier US destroyers that also can't stealth torp, but maybe if you spec for it a little bit, you can kind of stealth torp at things that you're kiting away from, sort of, maybe almost. And then in a little bit from that, on the gun end of the spectrum, you've got the Soviet destroyers that can stealth torp, so Grimiashi, Leningrad, and once you've finished upgrading it, Tashkent. And then Coming in a little bit more from that end of the spectrum, you've got the high-tier U.S. destroyers that still primarily want to use their guns, but now they can at least stealth torp with some comfortability. Now we're going to swing it to the opposite end of the spectrum. Really, at the moment, the main torp-centric only type of destroyers we've got are the Imperial Japanese Navy destroyers. Now, that's not to say don't use their guns. I do have a PSA on the channel about that. IJN destroyers do have guns. I'm not sure if y'all are aware of that, but they don't often want to be using them. They're super high alpha strike, very low DPM, useful mainly for just kind of finishing off targets or setting up a follow on fire after you've landed torps, caused a flood, and they've damaged con the flood. Not your main bread and butter. You know, the IJN don't make their money, don't earn their living off of using their guns. At least as of yet, if and when we get the IJN gunboats, obviously we'll have to add them to the spectrum. They'll be somewhere closer to the gun end of the spectrum, I would assume. And then in the middle, you've got the hybrid boats. And closest to that center, almost completely smack dab right down the middle, You've got the French destroyers. Now, I would make the argument that they do skew slightly towards torpedo focused. That's a conversation that's quite lengthy as to why I think that. And it's better subject for another video. But I do think that the French stats do lend themselves to being really good hybrids that skew just slightly towards torpedo boat. In the same sort of hybrid area, we've also got the UK or British destroyers. They're hybrids, great guns, also pretty good torpedoes, but they skew slightly towards the gun end of the spectrum. They've got great turrets, relatively fast reload, those multiple quick smokes lend themselves better to kind of hit and run, run and gun. Drop a smoke, sit in it, shoot for a little while, get out of there. Drop another smoke, shoot for a little while, get out of there. Type of tactics. Their torps have kind of a long reload. They don't have the best firing arcs on those guns. Meanwhile, they've got, the, at least the higher tier ones, double barrels, two turrets on the front on Lightning and Jervis. Turrets go 360. You can kite and go bow in really effectively with the guns. Meanwhile, you do still have pretty solid torps to back them up. Torps that I would argue are better than the Americans or the Soviets, especially when you throw in the wild card of the single launch torpedoes. But the guns, I would argue, are still better on the Brits than the torpedo systems. Therefore, they are hybrids that skew towards guns. You know, guns 
great guns with torps to back them up is kind of how I should say it for shorthand. And then on the opposite side of the British destroyer coin, you've got the main topic of today's video, the German destroyers, which are hybrids that skew just as far from the center, I'd say, as the Brits, but on the opposite side. They're torp boat hybrids with guns to back them up. The torpedo systems are better. They have very generous firing angles. The spreads are fairly narrow, keeping your torpedoes tight together. The reloads are great. They're relatively tough torpedo launchers. I don't find in my German destroyers that they get knocked out terribly often, compared to the Brits at least. So they're a little more robust in terms of their launcher health. Meanwhile, they do have pretty decent guns. Not the best. They're definitely no American or Soviet guns. They're not even as good as the British guns. But they're better than the IJN guns. Most of them, depending on which ship you're talking about, have decent HE fire chance and okay alpha strike. Not quite as good as the IJN, but they do have slightly better traverse, slightly better reload than the IJN. Again, not as good as the French, not as good as the Brits. But... They've got good torpedoes with decent guns to sort of back them up, to get them out of a fight. And when you throw in the wild card of the smoke sonar combo, the most powerful smoke sonar combo in the game, you can that kind of elevates the gun usefulness in a lot of situations. Not all, obviously. You don't have a ton of charges of those things. But in one or two situations per game, you can get that smoke sonar combo working for you and back yourself up with those guns while primarily focusing on the torpedoes. So since the German destroyers are those hybrids that skew towards torpedo boat with guns to back them up, Von Spee's clearly got the better set of skills to double down on what that sh ship class and what that ship line already does really well, double down on that and make it shine that much more. He's got Subsurface Venture to give your torps speed and better reload time. German Destroyers already have pretty solid reload. Making that even better is great. German Destroyers are already pretty well concealed. One of the more well concealed lines in the game. Fragile Threat, again, helping you double down on that. Plus, Von Spee has Fragile Threat, the you know greater stealth benefiting skill compared to the base just generic look at me now. And then he can stack Bay on top of that. So he's got the better version of Look At Me Now, which is Fragile Threat. And he can use an Inspiration sp slot for Bay to stack that. Bay can't do that. He just is stuck with Look At Me Now. German Torps have decent range, so you're getting a percentage increase on that already pretty strong range with Torpedo Safari. Or... If you find that it's fine on the range and you don't want to be throwing those things down at like maximum range, you can just run with back in stock and double down on an already pretty solid reload speed, stack that with subservice venture, and just have a blitz, kind of DPM almost type of approach to your German torpedoes, sort of accuracy by volume. One of the main hits against the German destroyers is that their torps don't hit terribly hard per torp. But that's not the point with the German destroyers. They're not about the alpha strike on the torps like the IJN. People get all bent out of shape about, oh, they only do like 14,000 damage at the higher tiers. Yeah, and when you can land two, three, four of them every salvo and then do it again 55 seconds later, I'd take that over you know, kind of one or two that do 30% more damage every minute and a half? I think the choice is obvious. Throw on Torpedo Safari. I actually think that the nerf to Torpedo Safari is not a nerf. Destroyers want to shoot their guns to take out a target and then be able to drop spot when that target is dead. By giving a slight nerf to your range, not a huge nerf, but a slight nerf to your range on your destroyers, it means that in more circumstances, you're only going to have the one target that you're going to shoot at. Or maybe anybody else that is in range is behind an island or behind a smoke screen. You're going to take out that target that you are shooting at, and then you're going to drop spot. By having a super long range on your destroyer, 
it's going to increase the chances that someone else further away from you, a cruiser, a battleship, another DD on another part of the map, etc., is going to keep you lit even after you've taken out this target. They're going to keep you lit. So personally, I don't think that nerfing the range by only 7% is a difference that hinders your destroyer gun performance all that much. How often are you really going to be engaging a target at that final 7% of your range? Not terribly often, and even when you do, how effective are you really being? Meanwhile, you're less likely to get spotted by somebody and stay lit by somebody that's in that little 7% window. I think that situation comes up more often than any sort of effective application of your guns in that 7% band. So personally, I think Torpedo Safari is sort of a double buff that's hidden and disguised as a nerf. Smoke on the water, obviously you run this, you don't need any speed. You do want the guns to be effective when you're using them, and you don't want to nerf the precision there at all. So you run Smoke on the Water, which does stack with his base trait. Obviously, Von Spee's got access to Unstoppable, as every, you know, regular human, <laughs> authentic, historical commander in the game for Destroyers has access to. But stacking Smoke on the Water with Misty Morning does make the smoke screens come off cooldown pretty well. Now, I will admit, I am capable of mounting an argument against myself, Von Spee's got one of the weakest base traits four destroyer commanders in the game. That can't be denied. It only helps you once per game because it doesn't help you at the beginning because your smoke generator is ready to go. And the German destroyers only have, as of now, two charges of smoke screen. So it literally only helps you after you've used the first one to cool down for the second one. That's the only time his base trade is giving you any benefit. So, I will admit that Von Spee has one of, if arguably not the weakest base traits for Destroyer Commanders in the entire game. That can't be denied. However, base traits aren't everything. I think his suite of skills over here to the right lends itself to the maximum potential of the German Destroyers. And by selecting this set of skills or possibly swapping out Torpedo Safari for back in stock. That's also a viable build ship to ship, depending on what exactly you're going for and the situations. But overall, this set of skills really makes the German destroyers shine and doubles down on what they're already really great at. On top of the fact that you can slot in a bay and get the effect of bay while stacking that with Fragile Threat, I don't think he can be beat. Now the other obvious half of this discussion is that you have to be picking Von Spee over Bay. Bay does have his base trait baked in, so that does free up a second inspiration slot. You're getting the benefit of his concealment to destroyers without, you know, using up an inspiration slot. That can't be denied. However, you lose out on the ability to take Fragile Threat. So in order to have the same level of concealment as a Von Spee plus Bay Inspiration build, you'd have to burn an Inspiration slot on a Swirsky, a super high level Swirsky that you've dumped a bunch of POs, Insignias, Blue XP, and Commendations into. And since you can't buy Swirsky out of the store to dupe him, you can't pull him out of a crate to dupe him, those have to all be Blue Commendations, keep in mind. So you're functionally having to do the same thing to achieve the same level of concealment. And since concealment is king in destroyers, on average, the majority of people running a bay build are going to have a worse concealment than somebody running a Von Spee build. Sure, the bay build's going to have slightly more hit points, but the Von Spee build can dictate the engagement by, in my experience, several hundred meters. And that's often enough of a difference to make a difference, and you can slow down and smoke up if necessary, you can turn if you're slightly anticipating the guy coming, you can draw him into an ambush against some of your support ships, or draw him into an ambush around an island, etc. But Echo, how are you going to anticipate him coming? He's a destroyer, you're not going to spot him for only a couple hundred meters. Oh, wait a minute, Twist and Track tells me that he's coming. Doesn't say in the description of Twist and Track that he's coming, 
but it does. This happened a couple of patches ago. Twist and Track now gives a detected indicator to the enemy when they're detected. I just got done with a kamikaze game where the Farragut player was running Twist and Track. How did I know that? Because I was located. I knew he was on my side of the map, and although he was a vastly better gunboat than me, Farragut to kamikaze, guns, that's not even a comparison. That's night and day. But I knew he was coming. I was able to set myself up to kite away, get my guns pre-locked, anticipate him, draw him into an ambush, outspot him, because I have a way better uh, detectability, which is the same case, Von Spee versus Bay build, if you're comparing Gata to Gata, Moss to Moss, Z23 to Z23, T61 to T61, it doesn't matter. A Von Spee build is pretty much always going to have a better concealment than a Bay build. The reason someone's running Bay is to run Twist and Track. They're not going to run Reaching Out or Back in Stock in Slot 3. That's basically the only compelling argument for a Bay build is to run Twist and Track. Well, then you're going to know they're coming. You're going to get located. You're going to know that they're coming roughly within a grid square or two. And then you're going to be able to set up, preemptively lock your guns in place using gun lock. You're going to be able to set yourself up to kite away. You're going to outspot him by at least a couple hundred meters. Your cruisers, your battleships, your other DDs are going to start lighting him up. He's going to maybe start shooting at them or whatever. You can shoot, get him spotted by them. You can smoke up. It's so easy to outplay a bay build. Yes, the, the odd Unicom here and there might be able to outplay you. But on average, because Twist and Track gives their position away, approximately, you're going to know they're coming. You're going to know they're looking for you. You're going to outspot them anyway. You're going to be able to probably outplay them, especially when you've got support ships around. You can outrun them. You can kite them. Advantage in DD fights goes to the person who's kiting, not the person who's pursuing, etc. For all these reasons, I don't think Bay is the more attractive option. Now, I will concede that before Twist and Track was functionally nerfed, I just say Twist and Track was nerfed, before Twist and Track was nerfed, it was a much more compelling argument. The advantages... Bay versus Von Spee were roughly equal. It was more down to your playstyle. But now that Twisted Track basically gives your position away to within about a grid square, it doesn't make any sense to run Bay. And you're giving the enemy too much information. A lot of this game, a lot of the meta game, is information. And I don't like telling my enemy what build I have. Oh, I'm located. It's only a Z-23 on the enemy team. Or, you know, there's a Z-23 and some French destroyers, so there's no way they could have Twist and Track, or whatever the situation is. It's like, okay, I'm located. Okay, I know he has a bay build. Okay, I know I'm going to most likely outspot him. And I know he's going to be a little more gun-centric. My torps are better than him. I'm more stealthy. You can set up ambushes. You can take them down. And then the bay build didn't do him any good. And he probably should have just been running Von Spee. And lastly, and probably the most important point I'd like to make, is that Von Spee is just the better looking of these two guys. I mean, look at that great swoop. He's got the salt and pepper beard and salt and pepper hair. He's got the dapper little tie thing going on and a great looking jacket. You can't possibly beat Von Spee in terms of looks. Meanwhile, Bay looks like that kind of chubby creeper guy who lives in his grandma's basement three doors over from you. I mean, look at this guy. He's Something's about him. He's got his hand behind his back. Who knows what's in that hand? I don't want to ask him. Probably a little creeper. Let's just say uh, I wouldn't want to have Bay standing next to me in the pilot house. All right, all jokes aside, let's stop yapping and get into some gameplay and take a look at how Von Spee actually gets these things done out on the high seas. Shadow, do you run oh, my Bay? My lightning will be even better. You're on Bay or uh, Von, no, Von Spee? The other, the other wanker. Yeah, Von Spee. 15 Von Spee with a 16 Bay inspiration. It's the only way to fly. Or sail, as it were. So as you can see there, we're running a double T61 and Arizona division. I'm with Shadow and DB. And you heard that Shadow is also running a Von Spee build on his T61. T61 is my most played ship. 
I have 1.2 million Elite XP in this boat. A lot of that has come from several seasons of running it in ranked, but I play this pretty much every week for my Tier 5 Premium win for my Sunday Premium Supplies missions, and I play it outside of that capacity as well, at least a couple of days a week. I always run it with Von Spee. I have a high degree of success. Uh, we'll just leave it that way. And this game here in particular, running double T61, is going to highlight several different ways that you can have success in this boat, or any other German DD for that matter, by using a Von Spee build. So we're going to coordinate here with Shadow. I'm going to go kind of wide on Charlie. He's going to go more towards the center part of the map on Charlie, and we're going to create kind of a pincer or trap for any DDs or even cruisers coming through into Charlie. So we note there, yep, New York has spawned at this cap, so in all likelihood the Farragut is as well. Now you might notice, Echo, why do you have your guns locked off your starboard side, but the cap where the enemy is probably going to come through is on your port side? Well, let's say an enemy does pop up there, and my guns are on port. That's going to encourage me to turn to starboard and put my bow right into this island and ground. Or, I've got the guns this way, they're on starboard, so in order to use them, i got to turn to port. This puts me towards, or, you know, sailing into a more efficient and effective and relevant part of the map, i.e. the middle. I'm not going to beach. My other support guys are in that direction. And I'm keeping the islands between me and these battleships. Like, four or five reasons to have my guns locked sort of, quote-unquote, on the opposite side of where I anticipate the action. See here, I've turned to port. And now I'm got my guns in position for when I'm going to open up on this Farragut. I'm not shooting yet. I don't want to give my position away. We're going to launch some torps at those battleships coming around. It is kind of a blind launch, but that was where the indicator last was when they were spotted. They don't really have a reason to change course terribly much. So we're just going to launch on that last indicated. We're coordinating with Shadow there and DB. DB's launch, uh, loading up the HE. We're going to fire up the sonar here and use the smoke sonar combo that makes the Germans so good. And I'm just going to get this Farragut lit. Get my guns on him in case I have to use them. But I'm going to let Shadow and DB do most of the work here and I'll just do the spotting. I am going to smoke and get some shots in here. And we see there, four torps that I sent a little while ago landed. And Farragut goes down. We've got the DD threat on this flank completely eliminated. Nobody took any torps from him. Nobody took any gunfire from him, really. And now here we see another great dynamic that comes into play with Von Spee. We haven't talked about this yet. But one of the perks or benefits of having longer torp range, better torp speed so they get to that max range relatively quickly, but then also reducing the reload is that you'll find that the torps kind of reach their maximum range and hit or don't hit a target right around the time that they're reloaded. It's one of the, it's kind of the perfect sweet spot balance of those three factors, the reload, the range, and the torp speed. They're kind of getting to target right around the time that they're coming back off reload. So you can make an informed decision on, do I need to relaunch these? Or did that guy die? Or is he going to get mopped up by my teammate or whatever? And then you can relaunch them. If you don't have that interplay of those three factors kind of perfectly dialed in, because you're running a bay build, hint, hint, stomp, stomp, you can often be out of position and waste a torp send, or you're not ready to send yet, or whatever. And I just find that that rhythm, it's all about that rhythm. In case you haven't noticed, the second half of my tag and name is Drummer. So I am about the rhythm, right? And it's just a great feel to like launch the torps. They hit the target. They're ready to go right when they're hitting. I can make an informed decision. Do I need to use these on the same guy? Where should I launch them? How's he reacted to my last set of torps, etc.? You can't develop that rhythm with the nature of the bay build. And that's one of the perks that make a Von Spee build better. So now we're going to split our T61 dynamic here. I'm going to hang out up here and do the heavy lifting against the New York. I'm going to get in some, you know, weightlifting training here in the gym. Meanwhile, 
uh, Shadow in his T61 is going to go get some cardio, and he's going to run all around the map and get caps and help out on the other flank. That's another great thing about the T61 with a Von Spee build. You can choose that. You're, you're more dynamic in your ability to go for either, you know, hang out in one spot and support a flank, or I've got to get to the other side of the map and support the other flank. And I think that a Von Spee build is more well-equipped to do that because you're not feeling obligated to use the guns and use your twist and track and hunt down just DDs or whatever. You notice there I landed a couple more torps on New York. Got another flood. I'm trying to get around. Now, now we're sending torps again. We see there. They landed on him. We cleared the island because the island was in our way. We clear the island and we launched them again. And now we're going to just sit here and use the guns. The guns still work on a Von Spee build just fine. We set a fire after like a couple of volleys. That fire is going to end up sticking for at least a decent amount of time because we know he, he, he damaged Khan the flood from those two torps he took earlier. So let's talk about that gun performance in a Von Spee build compared to a Bay build. Sure, my DPM is slightly lower because my reload is slightly slower. I'm, I'm getting a reload nerf from Subsurface Venture and a Bay build is probably running Observant Rage in slot 1. Although not guaranteed, some people run Bay with the torpedo speed in slot one so it's not even a guarantee that a bay build is going to have a reload buff to their guns but either way i am going to have a slightly slower reload running the von Spee. but the alpha strike in terms of per shell hit is just the same because there is nobody running mortar in slot two on a bay build you're running look at me now so your per shell damage isn't going to be any higher and i'm it's not like I'm at extreme max range inside that 7% band that I'm losing from Torpedo Safari. I'm keeping him within that range. It's not like, oh dang it, if only I had the 7% range that I lost from Torpedo Safari, I could then shoot the New York. No, it's totally fine. I don't have to get suicidally close. It's not like his secondaries can shoot at me. If he does flip his guns at me, Whatever, I'm at a decently long enough range that he's probably not going to hit me anyway. And we land a couple more torps on him. It only took one because of all the gun damage that we did, the fire damage that we did, and we took him out. Could we have done that with a bay build? Probably. Would it have been as quick? Probably not, because the gun performance was roughly the same. We would have maybe got a couple more salvos off at him. But the torps would have taken much longer. You be the judge. I think that the stealth there against the Farragut, the ability to send torps on cooldown, on cooldown, on cooldown. We've landed sen seven of them in this game. Would we have landed seven already in a bay build? Hard to say. We might have. We might not have. We still got a couple of fires. One on the Normandy after he took that kind of blind fire set. That helped him get a little bit lower for his fight against DB. And then we got a fire on that New York. We gunned down him quite a bit, landed three torps on him and took him out as well. We've done our job against DDs. We've done our job in a cap by securing it. We've done our job defending a cap. We've got a couple green ribbons. We've encouraged a battleship to get out of the cap and get off of it so we could start getting points by harassing him with the torps. Meanwhile, I don't know if you caught it in the live feed of the, the news update below the minimap, but Shadow in his T61 with a Von Speybuild also gunned down a battleship. I don't know how low that battleship was, but either way, he got the killing blow on a battleship with his guns. Well, I'll spare you the few moments of me literally just sitting still, as there wasn't much for me to do on that end of the map. The rest of our team down at the far end near Alpha do eventually hunt down and take out that enemy Fubuki. We end that game with 97,000 damage, quite a few tor pits, floods, green ribbons, fires. We kind of did it all, a little bit of everything. Got the torps involved, got the guns involved. Our stealth enabled us to work over that Farragut pretty effectively, smoke sonar combo. We did take out that New York and get the kill ribbon for that as well. I don't know how much more of a compelling argument I can make. You can play Bay if you want to, but I just don't think it's there. Between all the things you give to the enemy by revealing your rough location and your build with Twist and Track, and the fact that you're giving up that better torp you're rhythm, your, uh, you're giving up the better concealment. I take top of the leaderboard there, 
And Shadow takes third. Our Kirov, who got high caliber, landed in between us there. We were both running Von Spee. Would we have taken those top spots running Bay? I don't know. Hard to say. But I think that the build of Von Spee for the German DDs is the better way to go. You're going to have more success more often. You're better stealth. Your torps are better. You can still get the guns involved, as you saw there. Both me and Shadow were quite effective with our guns, both against DDs and battleships. It doesn't really matter. I think Von Spee is the way to go. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are on this subject. It is a bit of a topic of contention amongst people, but for me personally, I think Von Spee is the way to go. Thanks an awful lot for listening, everyone. I greatly appreciate it. And as always, stay salty, Commanders. <laughs>